glory of Jesus Christ. future. 
Time is a single phenomena that has three dimensions. We live in time. We live in space. And you see this lectern here, this, this pulpit here, it has height, it has depth, it has width. This is not three pulpits. This is one pulpit with three dimensions. We live in a time-space universe. Time is three dimensions. Space is three dimensions. Now notice what our text says here in the book of Job. It says, go to the fowl of the air, the beast of the field, and it says, the fish of the sea, and they shall tell thee. It says, or ask the earth, even the rocks. And I want you to notice here that the Bible tells us that uh, you can go and investigate geology, biology, and uh, oceanology or ocean uh, marine biology will lead you to believe that the Bible is the Word of God. And when people do not, it's because their foolish mind is darkened and they prefer to believe a lie. All right, now first of all, let's look at the earth. Okay, in the earth here, it says here, uh, go to the earth and it shall tell thee. When we examine the earth, we notice one, that we have, uh, we have sandstone down here in the earth, okay? And this sandstone down here in the earth uh, is a result of a catastrophe of the flood. But there is no sandstone being formed in evolution. Sandstone is too pure. And also the salt, the salt deposits in the earth, I mean giant rock uh, salt there, uh, there's no salt rock being formed, there's no sandstone being formed. Another thing in the earth, uh, they up north in uh, the northern states where it gets cold, uh, they use coal. There is no coal being formed right now. There is no evolution going on right now. Not in the sandstone, not in the salt rock, not in the coal deposits, and not in the oil. Uh, one of the big things we have to oil is we have oil. Plastics come from oil. And uh, where's this oil, these giant oil deposits? Listen, there are no oil deposits being formed. I, if I own the gas station, if I own the Christian gas station, I'd, I'd put a sign right there. This gas pump and this gasoline and this diesel that you are using prove that the Bible is true and prove that evolution is a lie. There is no oil being formed. There is no coal being formed. There is no sandstone being formed. There is no rock salt. These things are the result of the catastrophe in Genesis chapter 9, just as the Bible describes the flood. Uh, you go to the earth. It says go to the earth. You go up here to the top of the mountain. And you go up here to the top of the mountain, you find that there are seashells there in the, in the, in the tops of the mountains. They have no explanation for that. Uh, they tried to say, you know, that the earth was uh, covered by water and, and that everything came out of the ocean, which of course we'll deal with in a minute. But uh, the fact that there are seashells on top of the mountain proves that God brought about a flood that caused the seashells on top of the mountains, that caused the sandstone and the salt deposits and the rock and the coal deposits and the oil deposits. And it says, go to the earth and it shall tell thee. Another thing, they have lava. The lava comes up, comes up out of a volcano. And the lava goes down the side of the volcano, and the lava hardens. Now, when the lava hardens in a volcano, uh, uh, from the uh, from one of these volcanoes, when the lava hardens, what happens is the north, the iron, the iron in the lava lines up with the north and the south pole. Now, I, I broke my arm here a couple years ago and uh, dislocated my elbow, and broke it in two places. And I had to watch this program on volcanoes. And uh, it was amazing, a, a very interesting program, because you see the Bible talks in Isaiah chapter 38, verse 8, and in, and in Joshua chapter 10 and verse 2, it talks about the earth standing still. It talks about the earth turning back on its axis. And they said this, they said whenever the lava goes up in a volcano, and it comes down the side of the volcano, whenever the lava hardens and cools off, the iron in the lava lines up with the magnetic pole. Now why is that important? Because you see when they go around, and they said this on the program, when we go around and we examine these ancient lava flows, you know what we found out? We found out the iron frozen in the rock in time and space is lined up just the opposite. And they said this proves that the earth stopped and that the earth turned back on its axis sometime in history. We don't know when it happened. We don't know why it happened, but there's the evidence in the rock. Notice what our text says. It says, Ask the earth, and it shall tell thee, the hand of the Lord hath done all these things. And it tells you in Isaiah chapter 38, in Joshua chapter 10, why, when, and how God stopped the earth there and the whole rotation. 
Now another thing the Bible tells us here in Psalm 47. Uh, it makes an interesting statement here about that there are shields around the earth. Turn in your Bible there to Psalm 47. And in Psalm 47, and here we have a tremendous uh, reference to the shields around the earth. And I want us to talk specifically about the magnetic shield. Notice what it says here. In, uh, in Psalm 47, and in verse 9, it says this. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. Now today, we have six shields around the earth. We have the ionosphere and the stratosphere, and we have these six specific shields. Now before the flood, there was a seventh shield, and that's why people live for long periods of time. But today we have six shields. One of those shields is the magnetic shield. There's a magnetic field that goes around the earth, and it is in fact a shield that protects us. Uh, whenever the earth is bombarded by radioactive material from outer space, it is shielded off from the magnetic field and thrown off at the poles. That's why they have the northern lights and all those funny colors up there because the magnetic shield is throwing off all this very, very deadly magnetic material. Now, the important thing about the magnetic shield is this. Uh, the magnetic shield is in a, in a process of deterioration. Each year, the magnetic shield is less. It is less. And they said when they chart, now watch this, this is very interesting. When they calculate the, dip, the, the rate of deterioration of the magnetic field around the Earth, they said when they chart it back according to the mass of the Earth to when it was uh, uh, full strength, they said it goes back to 6,000 years ago. That's very interesting. They said the magnetic shield was full strength 6,000 years ago or 4,000 years B.C., 4,000 years before Christ. Now, as we look at man, we find a very interesting statement here in Genesis chapter 4. I picked up a book on anthropology, and this book on anthropology said this. It said, you know, when we go around and we dig up all these bones, we find uh, some very interesting things. We notice that right at 6,000 years ago, the human race took a tremendous leap forward. And they said, when we go back and we dig up all these bones, dig up all these cities, we find that 6,000 years ago, 4,000 B.C., we find that the human race started keeping cattle and sheep and domesticating animals. Uh, when, we look, when we go back and dig up all these bones and all these cities, we find that the human race started melting down brass and iron 6,000 years ago. They said, when we go around here and we start digging up all these bones and spend all these thousands and millions of dollars doing all this stuff, we find that the human race developed musical instruments right at 6,000 years ago. They said the human race took a tremendous leap forward 6,000 years ago. I said, well, isn't that interesting? That's exactly what the Bible says. The Bible's called the key of knowledge in Luke chapter 11 and verse 52. Jesus said, woe unto you, you've taken away the key. The key. You know what? Instead of spending all those millions and millions of dollars and all that archaeological expedition, they could have picked up the Bible and they would have found out that 6,000 years ago, that's exactly what happened. Turn in your Bible to Genesis chapter 4 and verse 20. Notice what it says here. And Ada bear Hobble, he was a father such as dwell in tents and of such as have cattle. And when you go back and you study from the time of man today back to the time of Adam, uh, you says that so and so lived so many years, and Adam's lived so many years, and his son lived so many years. When you find out right back to the time of Adam was right at 6,000 years or 4,000 B.C., right there at the time of Adam. Now notice what it says here. Adam is still alive here in Genesis chapter 4. Adam does not die until Genesis chapter 5, verse 5. 5 is the number of deaths. So the first man that dies a natural death dies in Genesis chapter 5, verse 5. Notice what it says here. Adam is still alive. Here's his grandchildren. Verse 20 says, And Ada bare hobble. He was a father of such as dwell in tents and such as have cattle. And we find that when was Adam? When you go back to time of Adam? 4,000 B.C., 6,000 years ago. We ask the answer about, when did men start getting cattle? They said 6,000 years ago. Oh, that's what the Bible says. Notice what it says here in verse 21. His brother's name was Hubal. He was the father of all such as handled the harp and the organ. And so we ask the anthropologist, when did men start with musical instruments? It said 6,000 years ago. That's exactly what the Bible says. Exactly what the Bible says. There wasn't any evolution. It wasn't millions and millions of years. Notice verse 22. 
and Zelah. She bears Tubal Cain and instructor of every artifact of brass and iron. And we asked the anthropologists, when did men start melting down brass and iron? And they said, 6,000 years ago, 4,000 B.C. That's exactly what the Bible says. Listen, Adam wasn't a caveman. You know, they get this idea, you know, Adam, those, uh, and his descendants were, you know, kind of barbarians living in caves. Listen, they were melting down brass and iron. They had musical instruments. They were domesticating animals. Why Adam was still alive right there. And the Bible tells us that man is made out of dust. I was uh, going to Ohio State University. And a student there, his name was Bart, he was an art student. And he said, uh, he said, Bill, said, you believe the Bible, don't you? I said, yeah, I believe the Bible. He said, all right. He said, uh, well, he said, you know, it says, uh, the Bible says that man's made out of clay, doesn't it? I said, okay, so what? I'd only been saved about three months. I didn't know anything. He said, well, he said, clay is based on the silicon atom. Why is a human body based on the carbon atom? That's a hard saying. Who can know it? Oh, wait a minute. Does the Bible tell us there in Genesis chapter 2 and 3, and God formed Adam of the clay? That's not what it says. What does it say? It says that he formed Adam of the dust. You got that? The dust is carbon. You can go out here, you can pick up some dust anywhere, go down and have it analyzed. You find the dust of the ground is carbon. But now we have a contradiction or an apparent contradiction in the Bible. Whenever you think there's a contradiction in the Bible, I guarantee you the problem is you and it's not the Bible. Now that's what it says here in Job chapter 33. Now it tells us in Genesis chapter 2 and 3 that God made man of the dust, and that's carbon, and human body is based on the carbon atom. But what about, uh, what about this verse here in Job chapter 33, verse 6? It says, Behold, I am according to thy wish in God's stead. I also am formed out of the clay. Uh-huh. Here we have a contradiction. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, man's made out of dust. And then the Bible says in Job chapter 33, he's made out of clay. That notice it doesn't say he's made out of clay. It says he is also made out of clay. You've got to watch the words there. Now, I picked up an article here in the Science Digest. You know what it says? It said it is true. Man is made out of clay. It says the DNA molecule is just like a molecule of clay. And they said, it is true, man is also made out of clay. Alright, now notice what our text here asks us. It says, ask the fowl of the air. Ask the bird. If you could go up and you say, uh, excuse me, Mr. Bird, said, uh, how did you know to fly south in the, in the winter time? How did you know that? He said, oh, I, I don't know. We just kind of, we just did it because we're already programmed to do it. Well, didn't you just kind of evolve? Was there something that happened in your past that taught you to fly south? Let me tell you something. There's no evolution in the instinct of the animals. It's there. It's not in the process of evolving. The animals do what they do by instinct, not because they learn to do it. They fly south. They do a lot of specific things without uh, any real reason for them, but it develops. Uh, for the development of, the, uh, of that particular species and protects their life. But listen, there's no process of evolving instinct. It's there. They had a situation about the bees. You want to study a complicated, complicated thing about the bees. And they had a thing about the bee. What would be the best type of a house for a bee to live in? And so they took the honeycomb, you know, the thing of the bees, and they, they, they put all the size of the bee and what it does, and they put it in a computer to find out what the best size house for the bee to live in. And the computer ticked back the answer, and it was a few degrees different than a honeycomb, where the bee goes in goes out. And so were they born, you know, where they put the honey. And so they said, well, said the bees almost got it. And then you know what they found out? They went back and checked the figures and found out the computer was wrong. And the bees, by instinct, the program that God put in them, were doing it. It says, ask the fowl of the air. We went up here and said, Mr. Uh, Bird, said, what do you think about this? He said, well, I'll tell you one thing. He said, the gas is in the air, the helium. Every year, there's a little bit more helium gas in the air. Uh, why is that important? Because that proves that evolution is not true. You see, if the earth was millions and millions and millions of years old, like the evolutionists say, the helium would be so strong, you couldn't even breathe. Uh, there are constant changes. The Bible tells us another thing. It says, ask the fish of the sea. If we went down here to the fish of the sea, and we said, Mr. Fish, what do you think of this thing about evolution? You know what he'd say? He said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Evolution is a lie. 
That's the pack of liars that are talking about this stuff here about things evolving. He said, let me tell you something. You know what happens? Every year, the sea, the ocean is getting more salty. You see, the rain comes down. And, and when the rain comes down out of the sky and it goes down the mountains, it comes along, forms rivers, and as the rain flows down into the ocean, you know what happens? It picks up salt and minerals out of off the ground and deposits them into the ocean. And then it evaporates. And it goes up here again, you have the process of distillation there, and as the water evaporates, and then it goes over, and it comes down again, it picks up more salt. Every year, now listen, this is very important, every year, the salt in the ocean gets stronger, and there's more salt, and there's more salt, and there's more salt. The ocean is very young. It's not old. And listen, if the ocean, if the ocean were millions and millions and millions of years old, like the evolutionist said, it would be a solid block of salt and minerals. If you went to the fish and said, Mr. Fish, what do you think about that? He said, oh, that can't be. That can't be. Evolution can't be true because see, every year there's more salt and there's more deposits. And if it were millions and millions of years old, then it would just be a solid block of salt. I couldn't even swim in the ocean. And then another thing, the meteors. The meteors come down out of the sky. And another meteor and falling stars, they come down out of the sky. And there's meteor dust that settles down here in the bottom of the ocean. And uh, I, I saw a documentary on the ocean one time. They said, you know, the bottom, I mean the very bottom of the ocean is very, very Young. We just can't figure it out. I mean, you know, we teach that the ocean is millions and millions of years old. But, you know, said the meteors come down and the meteor dust settles and the fish die and the fish settle down here in the bottom of the ocean. And you know what? The ocean, the bottom of the ocean, is very, very young. At best, a few thousand years old. Certainly not a million. And certainly not millions and millions. If we said, Mr. Fish, what do you think about this thing of evolution? The fish would say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Evolution is a lie. It's a bald face lie. The salt in the ocean, the bottom of the ocean, the whole thing is a lie. It's a lie. Uh, they had a big problem. They were sending a rocket up here, you know, when they landed on the moon, you know, and they said the eagle have landed, and they got up there on the moon. They were one of the big things they were afraid about when they got up here on the moon because of the meteor dust coming down. They said, oh, you know, the moon is millions and millions of years old. And said, if we land the rocket on the moon, all that meteor dust coming down, said the, the rocket would just go, and just disappear in the dust. And the, the men in the ship won't even be able to see because they just disappear in the dust. Did you ever see a footprint when those first astronauts put their foot on the moon there? I think about that, the dust of the year on the moon is about like that. They said, well, the moon isn't millions of years old like we thought. It's just, uh, you know, not near. It can't be near that old because there's not enough meteor dust. It says there, it says, ask the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air and the beasts of the field. Ask the earth. And it shall tell you the hand of God hath made all these things. Let me tell you something. That Bible talks about a literal heaven to gain. That Bible talks about a literal hell to shun. The problem isn't science. The problem is there is a heaven. There is a hell. Where is hell according to the Bible? Where is hell? The Bible says and they descended into hell and they went down into hell. I, I, you pick up an encyclopedia, look at the earth. You know what's right under your feet? A literal, physical, burning hell just like the Bible says and the scientists have confirmed it. It's true. There is a hell. There is a hell. The Bible says, and it says, and he was carried by the angels, and he'll be carried into heaven. Paul said, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Where is heaven? The Bible says in the sides of the north. Five times in the Bible it tells us in the north. In the north. They took a, a, a camera and aimed it in the direction of the north star and left the lens of that thing open, took a light, time lapse photograph and they said you know in the direction of the north there seems as if there's a door or, or an opening there and on the other side is a light brighter than any sun in our universe the bible said in the north in the north let me tell you something the bible says here in our text i want you to turn there to Job, 
And notice what it says here in Job chapter 7. He makes this, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Job chapter 12. He says here in Job chapter 12, he makes this statement. He said, but ask the beast of the field. You went and asked the birds, the beast, everybody. Uh, and, and they shall teach thee. And the fowl of the air, they shall tell thee. Or speak to the earth. Go down there and check the sandstone, the coal deposits, the rock deposits, and the, and the lava coming up out of the ocean. I mean, coming up out of the middle of the earth there, up out of the mountains, the volcanoes. Uh, speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee. And the fish of the sea shall declare in thee, who knoweth not in all these things that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this. Now watch verse 10. And in whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. Let me tell you something. The Bible's true. Evolution is a lie. Uh, you can go to the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the beast of the field. You can go to the rocks. They said, the Bible's true. Why is that important? There is a heaven. There is a hell. He that has a son has life. And he that has not the son of God will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on that person. He said, in whose hand is the breath of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? There's a little heaven, a little hell to shun and a little heaven to gain. Let's pray. Father, we thank thee now for your goodness. Lord, we pray after examining these things, we'll realize the Bible does talk about a real heaven, a real hell, and, and the fish of the sea the fowl of the air, the beast of the field, the rocks of the earth are not near as important as man's eternal destiny. Lord, I pray you'd help us not let these things distract us or dissuade us from believing what the Bible says about a real place called heaven and a real place called hell. For somebody that's not saved, help them realize they need to bow their head right where they are and pray and ask Jesus to save them before it's eternally too late. Now, whatever it is, God, let me ask you,